What we'll cover now is how to add uh, gateways or a gateway into an existing system. Uh, basically what you need is with the software running you will need to have the gateways physically at the workstation you are at uh, as well as the black uh, USB to USB mini cable that was supplied with the initial software. Um, you're going to launch the gateway discovered device wizard it defaults to configuring a gateway or a router you select next it asks you to make sure your gateway is in factory mode the way this is done is when you power up the gateway uh, with the USB cable you want to hold down the reset button which is a green button right next to the plug as you're powering it up once that is done you select yes the gateway wizard will give you an audible indicator uh, as well as different uh, messages up here. It, this might look different depending on what version of software you have, uh, but you'll see the gateway is you know, going to be found or identified, uh, and then it checks to make sure that it's not already configured in the system, and it has the MAC address here. Once you select on Next, it's going to bring you to the actual configuration window where we're going to be able to name the gateway. We decide whether it's going to be uh, deployed via USB cable or a network environment using an IP address configuration. So once this window comes up, we want to give it a name. For me, I'm just going to call it a demo. Uh, for Zigbee channels, by default, you're always going to select all, where it's going to spray on all the Zigbee channels. That's pretty much a standard setting for us, uh, typically and not an issue. If you're in a network environment, you're going to select TCP IP, and you will either select this option and enter your IP address and uh, other settings the network administrator would give to you, or it may be a DHCP or DNS deployed gateway. Uh, for my demo here, we're going to select USB because that's how we're using it. You're going to select Next. It gives you a quick little confirmation window to make sure th these are the settings you, in fact, want. You will say Yes. Um, the next message box that comes up is going to basically tell us to click OK, but not to immediately uh, unplug the gateway until the red LED is off so that you know it was properly configured. So you'll click on OK. You'll wait for that red LED on the gateway to shut off. That red LED is located on the plug side of the gateway, and that just confirms that it's basically been uh, properly configured. Once your gateway is in fact configured, you're going to unplug it from uh, the USB cable and you can go ahead and deploy it in the system. So if you're going to go to the floor where the network plug is or what have you, you'll simply take your gateways and go put them out in their designated location. Um, once the gateways are all out and deployed within the system, there's another tool in the software called the Zigbee Map when you click this on you're going to see all of your gateways come up you can see the demo one that I configured uh, just now shows up here as well now one thing I want to point out when you're using the gateway wizard which was the previous window we were just using um, on occasion when you're configuring a, configuring a gateway uh, depending on the computer you're using and, and perhaps the gateway itself or the USB settings it may uh, not de detect the gateway during the initial try so I, I've had it happen where it might take a couple of attempts before the wizard finds the gateway and then allows you to configure it um, in, in my case obviously it happened on the first try so we were all set um, another thing that I typically do is once I see that my gateway uh, is listed here if you right click on the gateway you'll see various commands that you can use on your gateway uh, such as putting it in join mode or, or getting the status of the gateway and I will often just select like request status and uh, request the identity of the gateway this is like a very uh, simple quick command to the gateway and when I look back on my progress log I saw I can visually see out of the corner of my eye or if I move the screen here you can see the command was sent and the command was received. It's just a quick little tool to let you know that the gateway uh, is in fact on the network. If you don't see it here, if it times out uh, where you get a, 
I mean, disregard this actual message, but if your second line is an error message like uh, communication timed out or whatever, you may need to wait a little bit longer or you may need to ping the IP address just to make sure uh, the network uh, allows uh, that IP address on there. Uh, another command, for example, is if I select join on, uh, that's another command to the gateway. This one will typically not pop right up. It takes a little while because it's a little bit more heavy lifting. So, you know, it might be 30 or 45 seconds during the initial uh, join on command. But once the software sees the gateway, as it does in our case here, we now want to go back to our doors, which presumably are already configured in the software and have been put out of service. That's why that's their status right now. And what we need to do is we need to now pair these locks with the software. In order to pair the locks with the software, if they have already been previously programmed, we have to do two things. So the first thing we have to do is hard reset the lock. And then what we have to do is actually zack it with the wireless software to program it. So I got two quick little clips here on how to do that. The first one will be hard resetting the lock, and then we'll show you how to zack the lock. The reset procedure on our current Eplex model locks is you use the mechanical key override on a cylindrical lock, turn it so the latch is retracted, press the pound key, release the key, enter the existing 8-digit master code that the lock was programmed with, followed by the pound key, and you'll both see and hear that the lock resets and is back in factory mode. If you try to default of 1 through 8, you'll confirm that it's in factory mode. So that's the reset procedure. Uh, in terms of how to zack the lock, once the locks are out of service as they are here, and once you hard reset the lock, you're going to go to a designated lock, and all of our wireless options are grayed out, obviously, because it's not online. But if I select Discover and Zack, one of the uh, windows that comes up here, it gives you an eight-digit um, Zack number, and that's a unique number for every lock within the system, uh, as you saw or as you will see in the video example as well. And you're going to go to the lock, once you put the gateway into join mode, you're going to go to the lock and enter this information using this command right here. Maybe tough to see, but it's pound pound zero eight eight pound Zach number pound. And again, I got a quick little clip here. To Zach an Eplex lock is you're going to use the Zach number the software issued for you. You go up to a lock that's in factory mode. You're going to press pound pound. 088 pound. Use the eight digit code the software gave you, which in this case is 6053-6269, followed by the pound key. You'll see red and green, red and green. Eventually you'll see a green light that will indicate it found the gateway and it's going to automatically uh, pair itself to the software and then automatically program. So that's what happens at the lock on the software end of things. Um, again, if you have multiple gateways, you just have to be cognizant of what lock you're pairing with what gateway. Um, so in my case, I only have one gateway and, and, and you know, limited locks. But you would select a gateway, you put it into join mode. Again, out of the corner of my eye here, I see the green status bar go on. I know the gateway is in join mode now. And you're going to walk to the door with this Zach number and enter it into the lock. Now, I already wrote it down on a piece of paper. But I just want you to see what happens in the software. So I press pound, pound, zero, eight, eight, pound. Sorry, I just had to reset the lock. So once the lock is reset, it's pound, pound, zero, eight, eight, pound. I enter an exact number the software gave me. Pound. And the lock is doing the red and green light right now. And once the lock gives you the green light, the software will also show you that the lock, the exact number has been accepted for that lock. And then it'll go ahead and program the lock. This might take, you know, 10 or 15 seconds initially. 
Um, then what you're going to do is any other locks that are on that same gateway, the gateway is still in join mode, so you can go and, and hard reset and zack those other two or three or four locks that belong to that gateway. Uh, the one thing that the system does not let you do is you cannot put multiple gateways uh, into join mode at the same time. So unfortunately what you'll have to do back at the door menu is go to your other group of doors that are grouped to a specific gateway, put the gateway into join mode, and then go out, reset, and zack any locks that belong to that gateway. Uh, and then once you go through that procedure, all your locks should be up and running. They'll show up as being online eventually. Um, and then once the locks are obviously programmed, you'll also would see, uh, I just put an invalid pin just so you can see the transaction viewer here as well. So... Uh, and then that's it. Your system is up and running and you should be good to go.